Hello everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. This lesson is an introduction to diving into the deep and is the first lesson in a set of lessons about deep diving whales. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. First of all, I have a question for you. I want you to think about what creatures you have ever seen at or near the surface of the water. This might be if you've ever been to the seaside or if you've been out to sea on a boat. What animals did you spot? Pause the video and write down three creatures that you've seen. Here are some examples of creatures I've seen on the surface of the water. You might have been lucky enough to see gulls, like the herring gull. You might have seen other seabird species like the gannet or the fulmar, or perhaps even a puffin. You can often see small fish species near harbour walls. Have you ever seen a jellyfish at the surface of the water? You might have even been lucky enough to spot a marine mammal, such as a grey seal. And if you're really lucky, you might have even seen whales, dolphins or porpoises. But there are millions, perhaps even billions of other species of sea creatures that live much much deeper. As we already know, whales, dolphins and porpoises are marine mammals, so they have to come up to the surface of the water to breathe air. Luckily for us, this means we get to see marine mammals like dolphins or seals above the surface of the water much more often than we see larger fish, as they don't have to come up to the surface to breathe. The ocean is a vast place. Did you know that the ocean makes up about 71% of our planet? Think about all the creatures that are living in this huge open space. But animals don't just live at the surface of the sea. Just like there are features on the land, such as cliffs, canyons, forests, plains, mountains, rocky pinnacles, valleys and hills, there are the same features underneath the water. There are even underwater volcanoes. For example, instead of forests with trees, under the water there are kelp forests. And kelp forests are a very important habitat for a huge variety of animals, from sea otters to seals to sharks to sea urchins. Here, this map shows the bathymetry of the North Atlantic Ocean. And bathymetry is basically the measure of water depths. So you can see that shallower waters are in a quite a light blue colour and deeper waters are in a much darker blue colour. And you can see all the features there of the North Atlantic Ocean. So we can see the UK here and then all the countries that fringe the North Atlantic Ocean. And let's have a look at some of the ocean features in this area. We can see underwater cliffs, like the continental shelf edges. And as I said, these are like underwater cliffs. So this is when really shallow water drops off to thousands of metres deep really, really quickly, just like a big cliff. And we can see the continental shelf edge here coming round the western coast of the UK. There are underwater mountains and rocky pinnacles too, like these ones we can see here and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which runs all the way up to the bottom tip of Iceland. But how deep is the ocean? Well, let's take a deep breath in and see. The ocean can actually be split into layers, like we can see in this image. The first is the sunlight zone. This area of the ocean gets a lot of sunlight and goes to about 200 metres deep. As there is sunlight here, photosynthesis can occur to support a huge variety of life like coral reefs, fish, krill and the creatures that feed on these animals too. And most ocean life lives in the sunlight zone. As we get deeper, at about 200 metres deep, the temperature has already dropped significantly. And then we get to the twilight zone, where there's not enough light now for any photosynthesis to happen. At this depth, 
many creatures are bioluminescent, which means they make their own light. So you might see some strange lighting up creatures here like bright blue jellyfish. There is absolutely no light at all in the midnight zone. Some organisms here vertically migrate into shallower waters every night, such as squid, and other creatures remain in darkness all their life, such as sea cucumbers and brittle stars. There are no living plants in this area. Animals rely on eating creatures that have died in the shallower parts of the ocean, and they eat them as their bodies sink to the bottom of the ocean. This is actually called marine snow. At over 4,000 metres deep, this is called the abyssal zone. This is deep sea in trenches. Few creatures live here, and those that do, many of them are transparent and eyeless. It is very, very cold here, and over 75% of the whole ocean floor lies within this zone. So let's have a look at what lives where. Most dolphins dive to about 200 metres deep and the deepest ever free diver was 214 metres deep. If we go a little bit deeper, there was one bottlenose dolphin called Tuffy who actually dived to 300 metres deep and the deepest ever scuba diver was 332.35 metres. You can see the sunlight is decreasing now we're out of the sunlight zone. Submarines at 500 metres and occasionally blue whales will dive to about this depth as well, but not very often. Going a little bit deeper, other dolphins like the pilot whale might dive a bit deeper to 1,000 metres and a leatherback turtle there at 1,280 metres. We have the sperm whale here diving very deep and the deepest seal, the southern elephant seal, at 2,388 metres deep, feeding on skates, rays and squids. And here we have the Cuvier's beaked whale, which is the deepest diving marine mammal on the planet. You can see it's getting very, very dark now as we descend deeper and deeper into the ocean. And further still, getting deeper and deeper and deeper, going thousands of metres underneath the water. And the deepest part in the Atlantic Ocean is the Puerto Rico Trench. And the tallest part of the land, Mount Everest at 8,848 metres, doesn't even touch the bottom of the ocean. So the ocean is deeper than the tips of our highest mountains. And the Mariana Trench is the deepest point in the whole ocean at 10,994 metres deep. Did you know that it is easier for a person to exist in space than it is to explore the ocean floor? So out of all of these zones, where do you think most whales, dolphins and porpoises live? Most of them live in the sunlight zone. So coming up frequently to breathe air and also sometimes diving a bit deeper for fish, but mainly feeding on species living at the surface. For example, baleen whales feeding on krill, which are found really near the surface. So to recap, we know that just like the land, the ocean has features, including underwater cliffs and forests. And just because we can't see ocean creatures at the surface, that doesn't mean they don't exist. And the deepest part of the ocean is the Mariana Trench at over 10,000 metres deep. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at the adaptations that cetaceans have to help them dive so deep and why they dive so deep. We'll also be looking especially at the sperm whale and the Cuvier's beaked whale. Thank you so much for listening to another Orca lesson and the next instalment of our Diving Into the Depths will come later in the week. If you want to learn more about Orca, 
please visit our website. It's orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you.